Hi, my name is Wendy Vogel. I'm the science consultant at Kent ISD. Um, you just watched a video on the anatomy of a new science standard, and now I want to take you through the unpacking process. It's not a simple process. It's going to require about three or four documents, and then you're going to have to sort of sift through all of those to make sense of what that three-dimensional learning might look like in your classroom. So I'm at the Next Generation website, um, nextgenscience.org. I'm going to search the standards to the top right here and I'm going to search by topic. I'm going to do that because Michigan has adopted by topic and so the assessments will be written by topic as well. I'm going to scroll down here and you'll see the bars elementary, middle, and high school. I'm going to grab an elementary standard and I'm going to choose third grade weather and climate. This actually brings me to a bundle of standards that could be taught together in a small unit and all of the breakdown of those standards within those foundation boxes below there. And then of course at the very bottom is your link to the Common Core. To unpack these standards I'm going to give you and you should have in front of you what's called an unpacking or evidence chart. I've started the evidence chart already but what you will see is um, how you can fill that out. Grade level, topic, we're going to deal with weather and climate, your performance expectations and codes, and then you can see here that it mimics those foundation boxes at the bottom there. You have your science and engineering practices, disciplinary core ideas, and cross-cutting concepts in the same place that you have on the standard. Then at the bottom you have a place for notes, things like common core connections, uh, connections to other performance expectations, planning ideas, etc. We're going to use this as the document to record our thinking as we begin to unpack a standard or set of standards. In this case, we're unpacking a set of standards, but I'm going to focus here on ESS 2.1 just to make it a little simpler. So what we have here, you're going to read the bold print that you have here, but you can also see that when I scroll over it, it shows you which part of the practice or which dimension it is that you're looking at and um, those actually coordinate with the ones here below as mentioned in the previous video. There's also clarification statements, assessment boundaries, and that's definitely something you want to read. To take it a step further though, we're going to look for ESS 2.1 down here in the disciplinary core idea box and we're going to do, we're going to unpack the disciplinary core idea first. The DCI is your content and if you'll notice down here it's linked in this section right here. What's nice about this disciplinary core idea foundation box is that it will take you to an underlined statement that you can actually click on. And I'm going to do that right now because it will actually link us straight to the framework for K-12 science education, which is going to give us more information about what is expected of those third graders. There's some paragraphs here that are nice to read, but I'm going to scroll down and find the grade band endpoints. Um, there's an endpoint for each grade span, K-2, 3, 5, 6, 8, and 9, 12. What you're going to do since you're, uh, this is a third grade standard is uh, we're going to go through the by the end of grade five because third through fifth grade is that particular band. And then what I want to do with this paragraph is I really want to take it apart, dissect it, and sort of think about what it is a student's going to need to know if they are going to be proficient at this standard. Um, so I read that whole paragraph, take it apart, underline, and kind of interact with that text. I'm going to take a look at this first sentence here because I'm going to take that apart for you just so you can kind of see what it might look like. Um, but this is just the beginning, right? There's a few other sentences there. So weather is a minute by minute or date, uh, to date by day variation of the atmosphere's condition on a local scale. So I want to take that information, really think about it, and I'm going to give you an uh, evidence document that we talked about. And under here in that disciplinary core idea, I'm going to actually think about what that sentence means and start typing some of that in. So what I've typed in is, uh, students are going to have to know what is weather, uh, that it's minute to minute and day to day, that it's not climate, large scale seasonal data or decadal data. It also has to do with changes in the atmosphere. And then I need to think about what's appropriate for changes. I'm going to take it a little step further here. What's appropriate for a change in the atmosphere for third graders? Well, they can definitely talk about change of precipitation, cloud cover, sunlight. And when I think about sunlight, they can also think about it in terms of how much there is every day, right? So there might be eight hours, there might be 14 hours of daylight. So those are, are things that, that we can definitely look at as third graders. We're not going to get into pressure. Pressure is a fifth grade standard and um, we don't look at unseen particles until then. So that's something we're going to leave out. 
Uh, so that kind of is how you unpack that disciplinary core idea. You need to go to the framework. You need to take a look at that paragraph and really dissect it and think about what it is that students will need to know in that grade level. Now, we're not done because if we look at ESS 2.1, um, it's asking us to represent data in data tables and graphical displays. And so now we need to know what that looks like in third grade. So to unpack the science and engineering practice, there is a little bit of information down here. Um, one thing I think that's kind of interesting is that it's only going to use bar graphs and pictographs, which is appropriate at the third grade math level as well. But I can click on this, but it's going to take me to the framework and it's not going to be very helpful. So in order to really dissect a science and engineering practice, I'm actually going to go up here to search the standards and grab something called an appendice. So we're going to take that appendix and I'm going to click on that a minute and it's going to give me all of the appendices that are found in NGSS. But I want those science and engineering practices which are right here, appendix F, and so I'll click on that. I have those open in a tab up above and I've scrolled down already for you but I want you to be able to see that this appendix is quite lengthy but if you go all the way to the bottom it will give you really nice condensed chart versions of these practices. I'm going to look for analyzing interpreting data which is number four and there it is um, and what I want to look at is this uh, whoops this piece right here, the third through fifth condensed practices. And I'm going to scroll through and read that. And just like I took apart that piece in the framework, I'm going to take it apart here too and record that in my unpacking evidence chart. And when I look at that more closely, students are going to have to analyze and interpret data using bar graphs and pictographs. They're going to have to make sense of something in order to understand weather and climate. And that sense of something is going to have to be this phenomenon thing that I have to figure out, so they're going to have to figure something out that way. And um, we're going to you can continue to look at that, that column in the, uh, in the practices and, and, and dissect anything else and write anything else down that you need to. All right, lastly but not leastly, because uh, we have three dimensions, so we need to get into that third dimension, and that's the cross-cutting concepts. I'm noticing that patterns and cause effect are the components that I'm going to need to use, but I noticed that ESS 2.1 is, is actually in the patterns section. Remember that whole appendix thing. We've got appendix G, which are the cross-cutting concepts. We hop up here. Again, scroll all the way to the bottom, find that nice chart thing, and here's the pattern piece. And third through fifth grade um, is right here. It's a very small three bullets, but you want to read that, dissect it, and also figure out what needs to go in the evidence chart too. That will get you all three dimensions. And so once you have unpacked those three dimensions, you have a really nice understanding of what that particular performance expectation entails for a student in third grade to be proficient. You'll want to do that for the other two that are in there. It's up to you if you use the same evidence chart for that bundle or if you use individual evidence charts for each performance expectation. I know it's a lot and you're just going to get started for now. And we're going to go over this in a lot more detail later on with, uh, together as a group. Uh, but this will at least allow you the opportunity to dig into your standards a little bit before you start the school year. So good luck. If you have questions, please do, uh, don't hesitate to contact me. And we will talk to you soon.